Hello everybody, here we are, the first week of our dynasty officially ready to begin. And first, before we actually get into the game, we're going to get into the actual recruiting of the game this year. And uh, basically, how it works is you get 5,000 points uh, every week. And you can put those points into the recruits. You can allocate up to 500 points in one player. Now, obviously, that's assuming you have the points to spend. Uh, you have to decide how you want to divide the points up. So you can see just I'm increasing the point values by 5 on Justin Matthews. Um, and you can offer a scholarship for 50 points. Um, I didn't offer any scholarships this week because it's too early. But here's Josh Silva, a decent-looking three-star athlete uh, who has Old Dominion at the top of his list. So I put him on the board as well because I actually had some points to spare. And I didn't. I felt that the allocations that I gave were pretty solid. So here you can check those out and see um, the amount of points that I've given out to each guy. Um, for recruiting, uh, we'll get into other things like visits and that kind of stuff later on, but I did not offer any scholarships. Um, and basically this carries over each week, so you don't have to necessarily make any adjustments to the points. You can each week, but you don't have to. And with that said, obviously pause the video if you want to see uh, any more detailed information, but uh, we're going to be getting right into our first game, which is at East Carolina, the Pirates in the purple and yellow, and uh, it's our very first game, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. <laughs> East Carolina actually is a Conference USA team, so we will be seeing them as a conference opponent uh, starting next year, assuming that we get them in the schedule. But uh, there you can see the ratings. They are much higher rated, and uh, I will be right back after this little message. Situated on Tar River in North Carolina is a setting for this college football game. And now it's time for the coin talk. And it's brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coca-Cola taste, zero calorie. Enjoy All right, everything. guys, I gotta say the presentation is glorious this year. Um, they definitely upped, upped their presentation a lot this year, and that's the opening kickoff of the season. And here, nice little touch there. Coaching first game officially at Old Dominion, located in Virginia. So here we go. It's Taylor Heineke taking the first snap, giving it to Tyree Lee, the halfback. So we're going to get to know these guys throughout the season. Tyree Lee is going to go in a little misdirection out of the flex bone. And uh, some of you may be interested to know what playbook I decided to go with, and I am running with Air Force. Uh, they have a good variation, or I should say a good selection of formations. Uh, you have some flex bone, wing bone, but then you have eye formation, ace, shotgun. So there's a lot to work with. Lots of option elements, but some just regular stuff as well. Antonio Vaughn, our star wide receiver. Be looking to him for a lot of big pass plays this year. He just made that four yard reception, but on third and four, Heineke makes kind of a bad decision. Ends up throwing it into the dirt or into the grass. Or turf or whatever so we stall on our first drive and uh, not a great start but uh, you know it's not really surprising either so they run a little screen action to running back Ventavius Cooper it's quite a name Ventavius I wonder like if he had a really hard time learning how to spell that when he was a kid but here Lance Ray a big time receiver for the Pirates breaks off a tackle and nobody's gonna catch him because my team lacks that speed. That's what we're going to be recruiting for a lot, is just getting some quicker guys to match up 
against teams like East Carolina. And East Carolina isn't even, like, great. They're not bad, but they're just not, like, you know, they're no Alabama. But Tyree Lee, 14-yard rush, and I gotta tell you what, from uh, my early look at this team, he seems to be the star player along with Antonio Vaughn on the wide receiver side of things. And Taylor Heineke as well. Uh, looks to be a good quarterback. And so we hope to go far with this offense. And look, Blair Roberts, another good wide receiver, 28-yard reception. Kind of running a little post route, and uh, the coverage was a little slow. If I'd waited any longer, that pass would not have been possible. But first and 10 now inside the 15-yard line. Blair Roberts again. Looked like he crossed the goal line, but his knee was in fact down short of the goal line. So second and goal, try to pound it in there with Lee, and the defense comes up with a stop. So third and goal, we try to run a hurry up. We're in the Maryland eye, which is a good formation at the goal line, but no cigar for Tyree Lee. Line is three yards. So we did settle for a field goal, and not what we really wanted, but, you know, it's, it's something that uh, I, th I think the fans will take it right now. Ventavius Cooper, dangerous. He could bust out huge yards at any moment, and I'm just so scared. I'm just so scared. But Shane Carden and Lance Ray were really in the groove in this game. It was the quarterback, Shane Carden. He was just finding everything, and then they run a little read option. 12 yards. I mean, good grief. Good grief. Things could be a lot worse right now, though, so I will count my blessings. There's Lance Ray again. How many times am I going to say his name? You guys can count that for me, because I sure won't. First and goal, and it's about four and a half minutes to go. Yes, Danny Webster, wide receiver from Shane Carden. He's 8 of 9, 131 yards, and we're not even at halftime. We are not even at halftime. That's kind of somewhat depressing, but it's to be expected, as you guys know. Things like this are going to happen. That was a horrible throw. Horrible throw. The coverage read that well, but should have read the coverage because there's no way you should make that throw ever. So that's a lesson for you kids. Eat your carrots and don't throw out routes when there's heavy man coverage. But second and goal, look at that hit. Ventavious Cooper stopped for a loss of one on the play, so it's third and goal. And I'm just feeling really, like, in the groove right now. Just kind of like Lance Ray and Shane Carden. That play would be broken up somehow. Uh, Webster was out of bounds when he made the catch. So they did settle for a field goal, and it's a two-touchdown game. 17-3, to East Carolina is leading. And it gets worse. It gets worse for the Monarchs because it's 3rd and 15, and uh, stuff like this happens. He ends up on his back, but he makes the interception for ECU, and with 152 to go in the first half, that was kind of a poop play. It, it really sealed any, any chance of Old Dominion coming back and making this a game. That interception kind of screwed things over. Um, but again, you guys know, and I think you pretty much knew this when you voted on Old Dominion, is that there's going to be a lot of growing pains with this first season, probably for several seasons, but that's part of the fun. Um, so we're going to go from little guy nobody to hopefully a team that can win games and become a contender in the Conference USA, but... In the meantime, we're going to get our butts kicked because uh, it's second and goal. Shane Carden and Ventavious Cooper for the touchdown. 12 yards, and Shane Carden already has 216 yards and three touchdowns to his name. Hand that man a plate of spaghetti. We did get one good thing to happen, the sack and the fumble, although the big gigantic lineman picks it up and runs it, and that is halftime. I'll be right back with you guys when we start the second half.
Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. He's Davis, David Pollock here in the studio as always to lend a little perspective to what just went down in the first 30 minutes. Coaches get big contracts for winning championships. But you know, I think maybe they really earned their money in a game like this. When you see a team perform like this, leave no doubt, and look like uh, look like that they're playing to the level that they're capable of playing. Yeah, and, and a lot of times, these are the games that cost you championships. If you don't take care of them, sometimes you come out flat, you see the big upset down the road, you're comparing losses, and, and you're out of the mix because you lost to a team that you should have absolutely annihilated. So definitely kudos to the coaching staff for keeping everybody stepping in unison, keeping everybody on the same page, keeping everybody motivated. It's not easy. These are still 18, 19, 20-year-old kids that sometimes lose focus. Believe it or not, there are girls in class and other things for them to for them to focus on. So great job by the coaching staff getting their boys ready to play. Just about set to start the second half. What are you looking for? I I'm looking to see which team has that decided schematical advantage. And if they can find it, they'll blow holes three or four axe handles wide. Brad and Kirk will be there to call the second half. All right, guys, and uh, here we go. 24-3 to is the lead for ECU. In the second half, they get the ball to start, and uh, we're finally getting some pressure. I don't know if the uh, offensive line for ECU was fatigued or what, but uh, we're finally getting some pressure on the quarterback, which was non-existent in the first half, and coverage. I don't understand what just happened. Justin Hardy... Our highest rated receiver, and uh, he didn't really have much of a game outside of that play, but who cares? Who cares about that guy when you have Danny Webster again? Again. Danny freaking Webster takes a dump on my defense, and 31-3. Uh, our next drive, third and four, I put a, a backup quarterback in because he's, he's got a little more speed, so I just wanted to see what he could do running a little option, but uh, the... Defensive end there decided to stay at home, so it would not be a keeper option for Washington, so I couldn't see his speed, but there we find Larry Pinkard. 19-yard reception. He does get blasted. Look at his face. Just look at this. Okay, you can't see his face, but his head. His head got got torn off, basically. And we give it off to Tyree Lee out of the shotgun. Shotgun running is a lot better this year, by the way. It's so much more fun, so there you go. And throwing into double coverage, not a very good idea. Very fortunate that did not get picked off by Damon Magazoo. One of the star defensive players for ECU. We do find Jaquil Bailey hitting a bunch of different receivers in this game. Bailey, Pinkard, among others. And Heineke is running around trying to find somebody. This is the second time on third down he's uh, been kind of run out of the pocket and forced to throw on the run. So yes, decided to settle for a field goal. Might as well just take the points. Um, not much to play for at this point. It's late in the third quarter. We do get a sack, though. Carden goes down for negative eight yards. and That reflects on the rushing stats, which is always annoying to me because they're going back to pass. Because uh, ECU is not a running team, apparently. They just spread you out and kill you with speed like this. Danny Webster... Almost runs the referee over and almost takes it all the way, but he does get run down from behind. But uh, he does that. Not much to say here. Shane Carden, five touchdowns, and we jump ahead to three minutes to go in the fourth, basically just killing time because it's over. But here, Reese Wiggins is on the receiving end of Shane Carden's record six touchdowns in one game that is a east carolina school record for passing touchdowns in a game so as if things couldn't get any more demoralizing for old dominion there you go and you can see at the top of the screen there those are coaching uh, goals showing how much experience points i am getting for accomplishing said goals although i would like to get one for winning which clearly didn't happen but it was a fun game. I mean, I'm really having a lot of fun with the game this year, as I've said already. Even though I did get destroyed, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't mind losing, um, as long as it's not 
for ridiculous reasons. But there you go. David Washington, backup quarterback, did come in for a snap here and there. Had a couple rushes, was one for one on passing, but um, we didn't do that much damage. We lose 45-6, to six, as you can see. Don't know why I said it like that, but Antonio Vaughn, three receptions, 22 yards. Blair Roberts, two for 41. We did get four sacks in the game, though. Alston and Randolph both had two, which ties an Old Dominion school record um, for most sacks in a single game. But Derek Harden, 27 of 32, 401 yards, six touchdowns. <gasps> I still might have to work on that uh, computer quarterback accuracy because they are super accurate. Although, with Old Dominion, it might be a little bit different because the defensive backfield isn't exactly that impressive but there you can see we managed 14 minutes of possession to ECU's 9 but uh, obviously as you guys know time of possession does not really mean that much because uh, they won 45 to 6 so there you go thank you guys for watching this has been the old Dominion Dynasty we've actually kicked it off started next game we will be playing against Maryland who lost their first game to Florida International, so we'll see how we can do against them. See you next time.